Today on Bear Podcast. Ray and Robbie's pool party. Texas gay couple denying legal parenthood. Drones being banned at national parks. And Brooklyn's smallest penis pageant. All this, plus your voicemails and emails. Coming up next. Bear Podcast, 524. Hey, all you bears. He's texting to bump in the big hairy man. So scientists may have finally solved the puzzle of what makes a person gay. Well, I'm not taking you to get some of the scrub there fix it for you. Can I do the podcast in my underwear? Gay, the geek and the bizarre. It's one of those things that is fun and cute. Why last two glasses of wine? <laughs> <laughs> He's a lightweight, so it don't take much. You're listening to BearPodcast.com. Okay, fine. You really have to. Welcome, everyone, to Bear Podcast. I am Nar. And I am Ray. Welcome to episode 524. And today is June 24th, Tuesday. How are you, Maynard? Very good. Very well. How are you, Ray? I'm doing fine. I see you're wearing your zombie killing shirt again. Zombie killing <laughs> you shirt. You love this shirt. I know. I like this shirt. This time I wore my Bear Watch shirt. It's actually my the official Bear Watch shirt from last May, and uh, they they gave out give it out as a long, a short sleeve. So that's what I'm wearing right now. I just want to try something different. I I don't usually wear uh, tank tops or cutoffs on uh, on the show. So that's right. I keep trying to get him to do it naked, but he won't do it. So. No, that's a different show. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank you everyone for downloading or watching the show, guys. So or listening or listening, if you're guys the old-fashioned way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we we have a big show for you guys because we have uh, things to play, some uh, emails to read. So uh, before that, we do some uh, weekend updates. So it's been a big weekend for us last uh, Saturday. When was the pool party? Saturday. Right? Saturday. Yes. Okay. So we went to Ray's house around two o'clock, and. It was a big pool party. I was already there. You were already working there. Working my ass off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I brought egg rolls. I brought egg you rolls. You brought egg rolls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As usual. If I like your egg roll. Yeah. So it went away in about a half hour. Everybody. Yeah, they were gone. They don't last long. They didn't last so long. Okay, so what, what prompted you guys to have the party this weekend? Last weekend? Well, Robert, just one. I mean, we've been talking about doing a pool party and having people over and just hanging out. So we invited a bunch of people and came. Came over, you know, just hang out around the pool. We had about, I think it's probably 30 or 40 people 30 there. 30 people, 40 people, yeah. Overall, so we even had girls there. Yes, that's right. We had about four girls, I think. So. Four or five, uh, actually. Six girls? Seven girls. Seven girls? There were seven, seven girls? Seven girls. And so we're talking about real females. Real female in bikinis. Not, not, the, not the gay guys that were there. They're acting like big girls. So the gay guys were there, kind of. Well, they're friends with the girls, but they're kind of ignored that in that sense because, you know, they're not our type and everything. So I was, I was texting Schrumber about that. Hey, there are about 20 or 30, 30 guys here. There are four girls in bikinis. What? That's what he said. He said, he said well, and nobody cared. Nobody cared. 20 guys, there's no competition at well, all. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> there was some talk about one of the girls and one of the guys said, because he's bi. Somebody, oh, she's bi? No, he was bi. He was bi. That if one, one of the girls... He liked her. She just had bigger boobs. He'd probably try to do her. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So he's a boob man. Oh, him. Okay. <laughs> I think I know you. No, not about. that one. Oh, not that one. Not. Okay. No. <laughs> but I know one who is into boobs. Yeah. There's lots of boobs. So. Mm-hmm. But it was a good party, except for the one little fatal flaw. Okay. What is it with cell phones with, with people there? I don't know. At first, I thought Robbie just put his cell phone down and couldn't find it. Mm-hmm. Then he swore... That he put it in the bedroom. Okay. And then we sent out a message on Facebook to everybody that came to the party. Said, "Hey, check, make sure if you have a Galaxy, it didn't get picked. You didn't pick up the wrong one and stuff. You know, because people were drinking and everything. It could have got sit down and somebody picked it up and put it in with their stuff by accident. Mm-hmm. That phone still has not turned up, and I'm still hearing about it. I think it got it really got uh, tucked away somewhere. I think that's what happened. I don't see how we've torn the entire house apart. You three took the times. trash." We did not check the trash because it was too nasty, but at that point, if it's in the trash, it can stay there. But I don't see how it would have gotten put in the trash. Okay. That's the only possibility I could think of, except for, you know. At first, we thought it might have gotten mixed in with some towels or some clothes because allegedly it was left laying on the bed in the mm-hmm. master bedroom. And then we've taken the bed apart. I mean, literally, we took the mattresses and everything off the bed, put and it back together, and make sure it went slid down anywhere. Mm-hmm. We've taken all the dresser drawers out and went through it, took stuff out wow. and went through them. 
the nightstands. We've been through the closet. We've taken every towel in the house and unfolded it and refolded it. We would have went through all the dirty clothes before we washed them, make sure it wasn't stuck in there. We tore the kitchen apart. Mm -hmm. Every drawer in the house has been open. We've been through every room in the house. You the still can't find it. That phone oh, well. gone. At least so, you got a new phone now, right? At least so. you got a new phone. Yeah. Now I can just get it to work. So. And there's also one of the visitors who also had a phone accident. Because yes, they he got in. Well, they didn't jump in the pool with the phone. They got in and forgot they had it in their pocket. He forgot that he's got it. Sorry, Byron. <laughs> he, he forgot it's in, in his pocket. So 10 minutes later, yeah. submerged in water. There's things about iPhones. They don't like moisture. You know, that's what's good about the Galaxy S5 right now. The Google, the uh, Samsung Ga Galaxy S5. It's waterproof. Uh, waterproof. Well, my question is, why don't they make all the damn phones waterproof? What the, they yeah. know they're gonna get damp and sweaty and from being around people and stuff's gonna get spilt on them. It's just a way to try to damage and sell more phones. That's all it is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, it, it really makes sense. So that's why it's good to have a Galaxy S5. That's good. So let me ask you: Have you dropped a phone in the water before? You know I have. Or toilet? Or more like urinal. Urinal? Oh, gross! No, it was actually in the toilet. It wasn't the urinal. It was a toilet because the urinals were busy, and I had it. That's when I used to wear a clip belt, and I went to go. Oh, Whoop. that kind. Yeah, and I went. The clip And one. I went to pull up my zipper, and it went. So it was after flushing. No. Oh, gross! At least mine, when I dropped it in the toilet, it was after the flush. Uh -huh. So it's kind of clean, I guess. But that was my very first. It was my very first uh, smartphone. I had a Kyocera uh, Palm Pilot. Oh, we're talking about 2001, when one of the first uh, smartphones came out. You don't even hear about Palm OS anymore, do you? Not, oh, not anymore. No, it's, it's no gone. More. It's gone. So yeah, I had that before, and uh, it, was, it, would, it could connect to the internet, go surf the web, and and uh, you can synchronize your phone, your app, your contacts, your contacts, and everything. Your calendar. Calendar. So it was good. I mean, uh, that but that was the phone, the first phone I ever dropped in the toilet. So. Mm -hmm. But then I, it was clean. I mean, you know, after flushing everything, I got, I was able to retrieve it and wipe it with alcohol. I think it's. Somewhere. I've only had a cell phone for sixteen years now. Sixteen? Because I got it. Patrick got me one my last year that we were in South Carolina because I was driving so far back and forth to work. So I didn't even like the thing. Oh, it was one of the brick ones. <laughs> it ain't that old. <laughs> no, it was just one of the basic ones with the key thing. You know, texting wasn't even big back then. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into texting until I moved here, and I think I had that phone the first year I was, first two years I was here. Was it one of those flip oh, phones? Oh, and then I upgraded to a Razor after the Razor Oh, the Razor phones. And then I got into texting, mm -hmm. and then life has been downhill ever since. Yeah, ever since now I can't live without one. Yep, that's right. Me too. Okay, so the party went well. It was, it was really good. good. Uh, lots of it. Oh, my God. the You guys made... The pork pernil. shoulder? It's a per, it, the Puerto Ricans call it a pernil. Okay. That was really good. I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, it's falling apart, you know, very, very, um, uh, yeah, the meat's falling apart from the, from, fall, mm -hmm. falls from, the, from the bone and everything. It's really juicy and everything's really good. Somebody made turkey also. You, you all made turkey? I made the turkey. You made the turkey. So yeah. you got turkey and it's good. So much yeah. food. There was so much food. It was a good party. Good party. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a good time. It lasted pretty late, too. Yeah, until it 10 started 30. at two, and then we finally everybody kind of got out of there about ten thirty. Yeah, well, ten thirty, everybody. My cool, my, and Maynard was naked in my pool. Who wasn't naked? Everybody was naked. No, no, not everybody. You were naked too. Never. never right. Never. I'm right. too shy. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, so it was a good pool party. It was great. Um, Sunday. What did you do Sunday? You got to watch a movie. When did you watch? Yeah, a we movie? went and saw. Um, Edge of Tomorrow. So you Cruise. saw Edging saw Until Tomorrow. Edging Until Tomorrow, the uh, follow-up to Groundhog's Day. Um, Groundhog Day. <laughs> actually, it is, I mean, it actually, is like a Groundhog Day. I mean, day. actually, I liked the movie. I thought it was very good. I thought the storyline went real, real well. I didn't get bored with the jumping back and repeating yeah. itself all the time. And it made some of them made sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what's good about it is, well, the Groundhog Day, it's really one day. It's yeah. only Groundhog Day. This one... It depended on how right. he how he lives. Yeah, or how he got reset, or how he get he dies because yeah. because the title says live die reset. What is it? Live die reset. Is that what it says? 
I guess. I don't know. And anyway, anyway so one of the uh, taglines for that of that of that uh, movie, it's really good. I, I I think it was uh, original thinking. Somewhat original thinking. Yeah, I thought was, I thought it was a good idea. I thought it was a well crafted story and everything and stuff. Mm -hmm. The whole alien creature. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was a little weird about the growling blob of black, but you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I recommend guessing it. I mean, it's it's hard. It was kind of hard to find a movie time because some of the movie theaters had quit carrying it. Yeah. Like full times all during the day. So we ran around to get yeah. to a show we saw. It's but Tom like Cruise Tom movie, Cruise, but pretty good. So anyway, Ray, okay, so you were wa made, making me watch uh, a video a while ago, Ray. Yes, we were watching Johnny McGovern's Digmatized. Yes, digmatized. Which is all about being digmatized. Like you seeing some hot guy or you seeing somebody flopping around in their pants and just get mesmerized. <laughs> kind of like a lot of people on Facebook the last week or so have been mesmerized with J Jeremy Meeks. And now his dick photos have surfaced are flopped out on the internet, as you, we like to say, Yeah. if it's really his dick. But if it is, Jeremy, you have a gorgeous dick. Thing. Okay, so we're going to be on the Huffington Post. Yeah, his... Uh, and if y'all know, who, well, I guess I need to clarify who Jeremy Meeks is. Jeremy Meeks, let me see, a handsome mugshot of a Northern California man arrested on felony uh, weapons charges was has gone viral on social media, attracting more than 33,000 33, 33, likes and drawing comments, praising his high cheekbones, Chiseled face and striking blue eyes. Wait a second. It's not. This is more than that. <laughs> it didn't say anything about here. So Jeremy Jeremy Meeks, thirty, is a convicted felon. Was arrested Wednesday on five weapons charge charges and one gang charge, according to Officer jo Joseph Silva, a spokesman for the Stockton Police Department. So he's it's a criminal. He's yeah. a criminal. Yeah, he's a gangster. He's a gangster. He's a true gangster. Um, actually, when you're talking about my friend. Uh, David showed it to me. So look at this guy. He got arrested, blah, blah, blah. And then he, he scrolled down and showed me his dick. Well, yeah. So, really so they've been put, a lot of people have been taking his mugshot face and putting it on models. The guy's gorgeous. And he's got, he's looks like he's mulatto. He's got beautiful blue eyes. Oh, yeah. Nice face. It only goes to show that if you used your assets, you can make more money than being your ass in jail. Mm -hmm. But if the dick shots, then you can find it on Facebook, people. Um, not yeah. on Facebook, probably not. No, yes, you can. It's going to post it on Facebook. Facebook. Yes, oh my you can't God. see the pictures, but you can go to the link. It's got to be article. a link. That's yeah. a, probably yeah, a Tumblr yeah. picture because Tumblr. No, it's a blog post or somebody's. Oh, it's it's blog post would be a Google one. Yeah, okay. So, so you know, his dick is, they got a dick laying over here like that across his legs. So. It was pretty big. Pretty big and gorgeous. Very. But, so anyway, but while we were watching Johnny McGovern's Digmatized because somebody posted that on Facebook, and I said that'd be kind of interesting to talk. Topic to talk about. Have you ever been mesmerized by some dick? Uh, I may have been, allegedly. How about in the, you? In the shower. <laughs> in the shower. Shower or even just, you know, using your imagination just depends. Yeah. So, it happens. Uh, you know, there's somebody that I'd never seen naked until this weekend, and I was kind of mesmerized because they had a big floppy one. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Tell me more about it later. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I was just like, ooh. Ooh. I always thought that, but I just now it's been confirmed. It's not confirmed. So, <laughs> Let's talk about that later. So yeah. So anyway, what I mean, if y'all guys have been somewhere and it's like y'all seen somebody f dick flop out and you're just like your mouth drops open, and you're just like, oh my god, Becky, look <laughs> at that dick. <laughs> so have I? And it doesn't even that? have to be like a big dick because I mean I've seen some guys naked and I'm just like, damn, he's got a pretty dick. Yeah. That happens. I mean, sometimes it's such a pretty package. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Sometimes it's just a package. Sometimes it's ugly as hell, but sometimes it's a pretty package. That's too. when you put a paper bag. Well, nothing can cover that. No, 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 a paper bag in the face. Oh, oh, so you well, don't care about the face. Oh, well, I ain't talking about the face because some yeah. people have some ugly junk too. I've seen <laughs> some in my time. But, I mean, it's just, you know, you get around and it's just like, start thinking about dick. You know, I used to joke around with a friend of mine. He'd just be like, oh, I was just sitting in my office day and I was just so frustrated. I just had to think about some dick. And so I you said, like thinking good, about Richard. And he was like, was it good dick or bad dick? <laughs> <laughs> he said it was big dick. So Okay. So anyway, let us know about your comments. If you've been digmatized before. If you've been digmatized. <laughs> you know, if you've ever been to the Renaissance Fair, you've been bob bob -matized. bob -matized. bob -matized. Now you've been digmatized. It's, it's like a big flat like thing that's just flopping around. Yeah, there you go. So okay, <laughs> you were dick. I know when you were digmatized. When? Where? When? Hodo. Hodo. Hodor. Oh, Hodor. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's fake, though. It was. It, they said it's fake. Right. 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 Yeah. Right, it, it's yeah. a. It's um, prosthetic. 
That's what they said about Marky Mark and. Oh, really? And then Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor, yeah. You remember Ewan McGregor? He's got a big one. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, shall we go to our entertainment news? Okay. Right. I, I got a big, long article here, but I'm just going to... Summarize. I'm going I'm to read the first part so you know where it's coming from. All if right. any of y'all have ever seen Legend, which came out in 2010... Wait, Legend or Legion? Legion, excuse me. Legend. That's a whole other movie. Yeah. With Tom Cruise. See, we were on the Tom Cruise kick. So, um, anyway. In 2010, Paul Bet Bettany starred in Legion, a supernatural action pick that cost $26 million to make and generated $40 million domestically, earning a few fans among critics during its release. The film currently has a rating of 20% on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic score of 32. Spinning off the high-concept movie, which saw Bettany play the Archangel Michael as he attempted to protect humanity from a wrathful God and his army of destructive angels into a television series must have seemed like a daunting prospect. But creator Van Wilmot felt any pressure from the assignment he didn't let on when he spoke to Variety ahead of the show's June 19th premiere. Oh, it showed already. Yeah, so it came, it came on this week, or, la or last week, mm -hmm. Sunday. Friday, I think. Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, one day last week. So anyway, they've taken the movie Legion and they said it they moved it, they took it into a TV show mm -hmm. and they've said it twenty five years into the future. Okay. So the little kid from the movie is all grown up. It's it's set in Vegas, and Vegas is called Vega now, and it has these high walls to keep the angels and people out. Oh. And it's got a class system and all this other stuff. So it's pretty interesting. I should start watching that. Watch. So, so what are the angels? The angels do have wings. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, the um, young guy in the show is Egan, who is from, I want to say he's the same guy that was on Butterflies from NBC. Remember that TV show? No, I haven't. It was about the story of David, but he was also on not How to Train Your Dragon, but Aragon. The movie Aragon about the dragon, the kid who gets oh yeah, that See, not how to wait how come not how to train your dragon. It's, it's a book. Called, it's about dragons, but the, yeah, the, Aragon. Dragon, I know yeah. Aragon, but yeah. not How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, no, that, definitely not. But, but you know, we were talking about How to Train Your Dragons on the last episode. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So, but anyway. Um, the critics are kind of pleasantly surprised, but I was, I had some moments in it that I was like, hmm. You don't like it? Well, I mean, I liked it, but I was just like, there were some plot lines that were going on that I wasn't to get into concept with. And Michael Anthony Head is on there, who's from Buffy, Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's playing the bad guy, one of the bad guys. But at the end, it kind of tied some of the storylines together, and then it all kind of made sense. So, Okay. It was pretty good. So, but Dominion Pierce Thursday, June nineteenth at nine p.m. on Sci-Fi. So it was on last Thursday. Oh, Sci-Fi's got it. Okay. Yes, Sci-Fi got, and it has nudity in it. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. So I mean, it's not full frontal or anything, but it's like, but full, full, full backwards, re, full rear <laughs> full nudity. Butt. But that's, but you know, Sci-Fi has always been kind of a stickler about that stuff. Yeah. And I also noticed that they're picking up Spartacus, and they're starting off really. With, Blood and, sand, blood and sand. Oh, they're so starting want, it. Yeah, they're they're gonna start. It's gonna start premiering. I think it premieres this Thursday after oh, um, Dominion. Okay. So it's gonna be interesting. Interesting to see more guys in. Uh, well, it's gonna be see more if they're gonna show as. I doubt they're gonna show as much as they showed on sh on stars. Ah, that's right. Because it is. But satisfying. how much will they show? Because on the teasers, they showed a good little bit. Okay. So it's going to be interesting. See, well, it looks like sci-fi is trying to get some more of the adult audience in there yep. and keep their, but that's what they're going to do. I mean, they're a cable channel. I yeah. mean, they can sort of do that stuff. So, All right. This is... All right. I'm going to let you take this one, Maynard, since you feel so old over it. I feel so old. I guess. You, okay. You guys watching or listening, you will feel old also. 25 years after Batman, no su superhero movie can compare. We're talking about the Tim Burton's Batman. You know, the one with Michael Keaton? <laughs> it turns 25 today. Well, yeah, when this article came out. So believe it or not, it is 25 years. And in the quarter century since the movie was released, superhero movies have turned into a genre all their own. Some, some have been uh, more coherent than, than Batman. Some have been slicker. Some even more enjoyable. Actually, yeah, that's true. 
but none have been as off kilter, uh, confused and passionate as the 1989 film, and that doesn't bode well for the future of the genre. Let's get it out of this way first. Batman is not necessarily a good movie. No, it's, I, didn't, I didn't think so. It was okay, okay, so so back then. Yes, there's a lot of good good about it. You know, Michael Keaton made a surprisingly great Bruce Wayne. He did. I think yeah. so. I think so. Despite the fan outcry at his uh, announcement. And the movie looks amazing thanks to Burton's uh, direction and Anton First's uh, production's design. But uh, overall, the movie is as uneven as a mountain range. A lot of that can be put down to the performances which, wide, which range widely in the intensity. At times, two people sharing a scene seem like they're acting in entirely different movies, like uh, Michael Goff's, uh, Alfred's, uh, Kim Basinger's, Vicky Vale, and um, Jack Nicholson, you know, being uh, the Joker. But uh, the movie also reflects a struggle between Burton and Warner Brothers over just what a Batman movie should be. Yeah. Burton came into Batman with a particular mission, to show the public a cinematic cape crusader as fraught as the one who first surfaced in Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, then continued in projects like Batman, Year One, and The Killing Joke. Burton's Batman is in his mind, in his mind would drop the cap caric caricature the vigilante had been saddled with since the 1960s television show and replace it with something more bef uh, be befitting of a, befitting of a uh, character named the Dark Knight. So, what is this bat dance? <laughs> Well, in rebuttal to what the fight was with Tim Burton, they had Prince make a song called Bat Dance. Oh, he did? Remember that? Back then. You, you remember that song? I, I do. Because Prince was like on the top of his game, and he come out, Bat Dance. He just said Bat Dance. You don't remember the Bat No, I don't. We'll have to look it up after the show. So. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I feel old now yeah. about, about Bat <laughs> So back then... So if you read the whole article, it, it goes on to talk about all the casting, what Burton fought for, and what the studios made him do. Did he do also the one with George Clooney and the one with... No. No, he didn't, right? No. no. Okay. After, I think after this battle with Warner Brothers, he said... Yep. If you all. So, because it, cause if you're going to read the article, it talks about um, that Warner Brothers tied Prince into it because he was an artist signed to their label. So that's why they did Bat Dance. Mm-hmm. And stuff like, um, who else was it? Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Nixon was the Joker, which was made by the studio. Mm -hmm. The studio said, you're going to get Jack Nixon as the Joker. Really? They forced him to get They forced Jack, Jack oh. Nixon as the, as the uh, um, but <laughs> Burton got his way when he was casting Batman. He wanted um, Michael Keaton. Which I think Michael Keaton did a pretty decent job. At first you would think, no, I remember back then. But it was hard Michael because Keaton. it was so on the heels of Beetlejuice. Yes, and every, true. And I still see him as Beetlejuice. That would always be his main role. A for comedian, me. a Beetle, Beetlejuice. Yeah. I think he was in Multiplicity before, I remember. Is that right? He was cloned. Yeah, it, it was kind of weird having him around. And then he comes Batman. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Because um, Burton wanted... Brad Dorf and Sean Young mm -hmm. as the Joker and Catwoman. Because remember, Sean Young had that old thing, she was going to be Catwoman. Mm -hmm. And then the studio went, so. Who was it? Michelle Pfeiffer then? Uh, no, it was. Um, yeah, it was Michelle Pfeiffer at some point. She became, uh, she became a uh, Catwoman. Uh, That's what I remember. I, I, correct me, guys, if I'm wrong. <laughs> I can't remember. It's been a long time. Like I said, it's 25 years ago, probably yeah. 20 years ago this time. Mm -hmm. No, it was Kim Bassinger. No, she's the reporter. Kim Bassinger. She's, Kim Bassinger is Vicky Vale. Oh, Vicky Vale, yeah. Yeah, so. So, yeah. Anyway, so. But anyway, that's what kicked off all the superhero movies starting to come out. Because they did all the Batmans, and even though some were really bad. Mm-hmm. Well, we had with Superman, I remember having uh, Dean and Cain. I loved the, I loved that one, the Lois and Clark. Well, that's the TV show. The that's TV different. show ones. The Superman, the movies were sort of okay, mm -hmm. and which is why they restarted it because they didn't want to touch anything Chris Reeves done because in his own right, those were cool for the time period. Yep. But the modern day Superman with the Man of Steel and all the new stuff that's come out since then, they wanted to recreate it all. Yeah, I'm excited about the next Superman and the Batman. Movie. When is it coming out? 2015? 2015. Okay. 
and Wonder Woman and Aquaman and Cyborg and God, the whole Justice League is coming out. So anyway, so oh, and one other thing I didn't put in here, but last night was the season premiere of Teen Wolf. Oh yeah, you mentioned it last week. How was it? How many, all, it? how many of y'all were disappointed there was no half nude scenes in there? Are them running around? On the first episode? On the first episode. There's usually somebody shirtless or, you know, having to get naked to get into water or do something crazy, but none. No, 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 no. Any, was there any I was transformation? Highly, uh, there were some transformations, yes. I was highly disappointed, though. So. Well, usually when you do some transformation, you get naked. Just like True Blood. They Not on those. They don't do the whole body thing. They kind of do a little bit of the Teen Wolf, like the original Teen Wolf movie. Oh, Really? They don't go full wolf. They don't go Sometimes full wolf. Sometimes they do. Most times they do the hybrid wolf or the half. Human. Like a like humanoid. Um, yeah. Just the, just the hairy face. Yeah. <laughs> Pointy ears. Pointy MVP. ears. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Ooh. okay. So I guess that's our entertainment news. Okay. Now it's time for the gay, the geek, and the bizarre. Mind if I take the gay? Take the gay, Ray. Okay. This is a fake mess here in Texas. Jason Hanna and Joe Riggs, Texas gay fathers, denied legal parenthood of twin sons. And since we did the report of fatherhoods and having children on our last episode, mm-hmm. for Father's Day episode, I thought this is kind of appropriate that this is kind of happening here. It's heartbreaking, and this is from the Huffington Post. It's heartbreaking to think that, that a state that ha- has erased the parents of children and put a family in legal jeopardy simply because of discriminations against gay and lesbian couples. But that's what's happened to a gay couple in the Texas after what they describe as the magical birth of their twin boys. Mm-hmm. Jason Hanna and Joe Riggs are the proud fathers of Lucas and Ethan, who were born in April They'd con- uh, after they'd connected with a surrogate mom, Charlene. Char- Charlene. 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 Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They had it it's spelt one of those weird ass spellings. So, very southern spelling, right? Yeah, uh, no, I don't think no, so. It's not even. <laughs> Each of the men is a biological father to one of the babies. So they did in vitro. They both got eggs. They both fertilized the egg. They both put them in the surrogate mom, and they had twin sons, I, uh, fraternal twin sons. Yeah. So. Oh, they were both okay. They're so fraternal. each one has a son. Mm-hmm. And the mother is just the, the mother. The woman is just the incubator. Yeah. That's all she was. Okay. So. Each of the men is a biological father to one of the babies, but because Texas has a ban on gay marriage, or, or gay marriage, it was ru- uh, ruled unconstitutional by a federal judge last February, but the decision was stayed pending appeal. And because a judge can use his or her own discretion in these cases, neither of the men is currently on the birth certificates for either of the boys, nor have they been able to co-adopt each other's biological child. Oh, that would suck. Why not birth certificates at least? Well, here's the deal. Only the surrogate mother, who has no biological relationship to the boys since the embryos were transferred to her, is on the birth certificates. In essence, the men are not legally deferred as the parents of their own children. And though they have DNA tests for proof, they're worried, particularly if something were to happen to one of them while the other still has not been able to co-adopt the other's biological child. Mm-hmm. So if one of, if an, one of them are driving home from work one day and gets an accident and gets killed, mm-hmm. there's an orphan child. Yeah, and the only person that has claim to it is the surrogate mother, not the other father. So that's what they're looking at. As of right now in Texas, two men cannot be on the birth certificate. Jason Hanna explained in an interview with me on Sirius XM Progress. So our attorney followed the so our attorney followed the letter of the law. We petitioned the court. We had DNA testing there in the court and petitioned the judge to ultimately remove the surrogate mother from the birth certificate who has no biological ties to the boys. We would like each biological dad to be placed on the birth certificate of our own son and then ultimately proceed to the second parent adoption. The entire petition was denied. Just like that. Mm. Just like that. <clears throat> so yet again, a state can't keep up with technology. Yeah. Women are having babies that are not theirs. Mm-hmm. Jason, Hannah, and Joe Riggs met four years ago and knew they wanted to be together and raise children. So they saved their money knowing it would be a costly process. They married last July in Washington, D.C., where gay marriage is legal, and then went back to Dallas to celebrate their wedding with family and friends in August. That's like what we did. They found a surrogate mom, and this past April, the twins were born. We were sworn in, and ultimately the judge was saying that with the information she had in front of her, under Texas law, she couldn't grant it. Riggs said of their appearance in the court last week. I was shocked. We had a ton of questions as we were walked away from that courtroom. Mm-hmm. It was particularly jarring to Hannah and Riggs because other gay couples in Texas, including friends of theirs, have successfully completed this process. 
The oh. couple's lawyer has offered them several options on bringing the petition back, changing the paperwork and the process, but there's no question that if their marriage was legally recognized, they would not be having this problem at all. Yeah. In order to grant second parent adoption automatically under current law, it has to be between two married people, Jason explained. And so considering that we're not legally married in the eyes of Texas, they don't have to grant that second parent adoption because they didn't recognize Hannah and Riggs Worthy as they wait. Hannah and Higgs, they don't recognize uh, recognize Hannah and Riggs. Sorry, I got something pasted in here wrong. Okay. Without co-adoption, if something happened to either Mary Joe, we wouldn't have any legal recourse to help the other's biological child, Hannah said. The state could come in and separate these two brothers. We want to reiterate how important it is for a state to recognize each family, whether it's same sex or opposite sex. The reality is to ensure everyone has equal protection from the state. So I, I don't get it. They, they have Well, proof. here's, the, the, well, here's the, the DNA deal. is there. It's proof. You are the father. That's what they would say. Yes, what but would it say. sounds like this is a Republican judge trying to pull some bullshit. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. Even though there's proof that there's, the there's father, DNA proof. They can't even get their name on the birth certificate and their biological father, at least to one of the children. Yeah. Well, both of the children. Well, each other. Each other each one of the kid. children, yeah. Yeah. So, and both, and by the way, both these guys are just drop dead gorgeous. So, they're, yeah, they're, they're pretty hands. good looking. Yeah, I saw them. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, it's just like you see all this progress in other states, and then you come to our home state. Yep. Or the what we or we now consider our home state, and mm -hmm. it's just like, this is bullshit. Yeah, I know. And it's, and it's also one of those things that the laws aren't keeping up with the technology because now. You don't have to have a, a woman and a man. Well, you have to have them, but just because a woman has a baby doesn't mean it's biologically her baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it became and by papers and by law, by contracts and everything, he's really just a surrogate mother. Yeah. Yeah. Because straight couples can do that. And I'm sure there was a, a, a legal contract that they did with the surrogate mother before the process started, because that's a lot of money to spend, and all of a sudden this person's like, "Oh, I'm keeping these babies or doing something like this." You can do that, that if you sign. Well, if you sign a contract and everything, you get paid for it, and then you, you suddenly change your well, mind. Well, you know, you're still you're still biologically a mom because you gave birth to that child. So it's it, we're, it's going to be rewriting a bunch of old laws about, well, just because a woman gave birth to it doesn't necessarily mean it's her child. Yeah. So. Gosh, all this technology, right? But anyway, so that's sad. Uh, I hope there are people... Uh, I mean, I'm going to guess there. I mean, it also, if... It happens the right way. It also might push the whole gay marriage thing here in Texas, too, because mm -hmm. it's kind of stale in appeals court. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway, let's go to the geek. I picked this geek because I've been to national parks before, and, and I've been reading about drones a lot, so this is interesting. Uh, I haven't seen a, a drone here in, here in my vicinity, here in, uh, uh, here in Houston. I haven't seen, but uh, I guess it's becoming very popular now. Well, I guess in the bigger parks, yeah, because they can't cover them as fast. I thought that would be actually kind of a cool idea to have drones flying around watching the park. Yep. Yeah, that's the point. That's the part of the uh, story here. Okay, so drones are banned in all U.S. national parks for now. For now, I think it is. I think it's good that they stop it now yeah. and then gradually make it okay. You know, I mean, to have it control over it. So the National Park Service has announced it's, uh, it is banning the use of drones, also known as UAVs, or Unmanned Aircraft Aerial uh, Vehicles, in, in all national parks. Agency Director J Jonathan Jarvis said in a statement Friday, the decision arose from serious concerns about the negative impact that flying unmanned aircraft is having in parks. Well, I know it's going to be annoying, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You're just having a picnic in the park, yeah. and then there's this drone, uh, yeah. you know, flying over you. So is this for non-government drones? Like people yeah. got like, So this is like model airplanes. Yeah, pretty much model airplanes, okay. but it's drones that are controlled by by a layman or by a, by, a, by a civilian. Yeah. So more on the uh, at the Washington Post, Washington Post, Washington Post. Because when Post. I think of drones, I think of the stuff that's going out and blowing over people overseas. No, that's a different kind of drone. Those yeah. are the uh, weaponized okay. drones. So these are drones that, that are quadcopters. They fly around and they the camera camera they carry a camera or something and then they uh, go around. Uh, I know my, my friend Jimbo from uh, Hawaii has one. He would take video he, videos with it, and he would go. It would the the uh, drone would go backwards to the waters and 
and the, in, in the in the uh, in the ocean and everything. So it's pretty cool. You can take really very very good uh, shots with that one. So anyway, so Jarvis said that the new rules are only temporary. See, like I said, it's temporary, and will prohibit drone use until the agency can figure out a policy to serve the parks as well as the visitors. Of course, the Park Service notes that the process of figuring out drone-related re regulations could take considerable considerable time. Considerable time. Considerable time. Sorry. <laughs> Any permits already is issued for for unmanned aircraft have been suspended and need to be reviewed and approved again. Well, the rules in effect are in effect drones cannot be launched from, landed in, or flown over the land or water overseen by agency, which manages it manages 84 million acres of land and 4.5 million acres of oceans, lakes, and reservoirs. So the agency will still use drones. They they yeah because the I just use one for the lost firefighter firefighter. Yes. Firefighter, 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 firefighter. <laughs> he farted and started a fire. Firefighter in California. Yes, so actually, it's part of this too. So the agency might still use drones <coughs> from time to time for specific uses: scientific studies, search and rescue operations, wildfires, and the like. So this is an article from Huffing, uh, from Boing Boing, actually, and it's interesting because um, I've, one of these days it's going to be a an appliance. It's going to be a a um, a tool. Right now, remember Amazon Prime is going to well, have Well, yeah, there was a thing on TV the other morning while I was watching CNN, morning, Good Morning, Run Media, whatever it's called. And they did this thing about this hotel in San Francisco that sits over, I think it's over in Sausalito, mm -hmm. where if you're staying at the hotel, which is about $10,000 a night, and you're on your boat out in the bay, mm -hmm. you can call room service and the drone will take it out to your boat. See? They have like a thing for champagne and all this kind of champagne service. I'm sure you shouldn't. Stuff. You can't uh, go over a certain amount of ten pounds or something like that. I don't know, whatever. But mm -hmm. I mean, but the hotel is right on the bay, and there's like docks and everything. They use so, drones. So That's if you brilliant. dock and you know want to get something from your hotel room or get champagne because you're enjoying, they have that already. Wow. So yeah, so that, so they have it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, that's if interesting. If you got ten thousand dollars, you can afford it. That's too much. Okay, Ray. This is a. Uh, this is for you, <laughs> the one you no, you pick this one. Okay. Okay. This is our bizarre. It's not really bizarre. It's more like funny. Uh huh. What is? But bizarre? it's kind of odd to some people. So, and the winner is my trip to book Brooklyn's smallest penis pageant. And the winner is Ray. Oh, do you have a small penis? No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, you have you have you have to see Ray's penis one of these one of these days, guys. I'm sure they've already seen it on Tumblr. <laughs> on Tumblr. Okay. Never. Give out your dick pic because it'll end up places you don't want it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're here to worship at the altar of small dicks, chicken bitches, bellows. The crowd <laughs> cheers wildly as the five contestants file onto the stage, all wearing sparkly pageant sashes with their names. Puzzle Master, a white guy with long, shaggy hair and black rimmed glasses. Twig and berries, a Kurt Cobain lookalike with a squirrel squire haircut. Peter Parker, short and plump, disguised in a Spider-Man mask. Rufio, a gel-haired Italian and a banana, bandana. bandana and a aviators. And Raj Kumar, a, wildly, a widely grinning Indian man. <laughs> Their penises are creatively covered, much to the disappointment of the crowd. Though one wrong dance move or strong breeze will reveal enough for the Im 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 imagination to fill, the fill in the rest. Welcome to the second annual Smallest Penis in Brooklyn pageant. <laughs> Last year's winner was a chunky dude with a tiny dick who worked for UPS. Oh, God. Bobby yeah. Castant, manager of King's Country Bar in Brunswick. And the mind behind the pageant tells me, if that guy can feel good about himself, anyone can. Yeah, it's all relative. You know, the competition, competition. She said, this is written by a female, artic, uh, a female columnist. The competition, she says, is about body positivity. If anyone makes fun of the contestants or thinks this is some sort of shaming fest, we kick them out, she says. Firmly. Good. This is a celebration of guys with tiny penises. As the event's Facebook page says, it's time to celebrate less endowed men with extraordinary heart, talent, and shitspa. Chutzpah. How do you say it? Chutzpah. Chutzpah. I'm going to isolate that audio for you. What? It's, celebration. it's a celebration of guys with tiny penises. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, the idea for the pageant came from a boozy conversation with girlfriends. My friend took a guy home and he was really, really tiny, she says, but she ended up having the best night of her life. We all had a story like that and decided, why not throw these guys a pageant? <laughs> 
really? Really? <coughs> so, you know, we had the article about if your husband has a big dick, your, li- your wife's more likely to cheat on you. Uh-huh. But then if you have a small dick, dick they're going to the, sit around and talk about your the, ass. Yeah, they, and they'll have a pageant for you. Pageant, so you Wow. Yeah. So I think title for the show. For this yeah. or something. At a hell of a pageant they threw. Here's the thing, says a girl named Liz as she waits in line. I could have had my Saturday, I could have had my Saturday and I'm not going to see any dick. But I'm here and I'm going to see some dick. <laughs> it's all about the dick. She's yep. dickmatized. It's been dickmatized. <laughs> a voice kicks in on the sound system announcing the show's hump, host hump, a host, a plump drag queen named Chicken Bitches who looks like the fur-clad love child of CeeLo Green and Oprah. A foot <laughs> taller than most of the attendees and wearing a Marilyn Monroe on steroids white blonde wig, Chicken floats like a cloud through the audience to a tiny makeshift stage at the front of the bar singing a show tinny song with the lyrics like, here comes these beautiful dicks. Really? See, I, that's, that's why I'm not a drag queen, because I can't sing. But I can lip sync. The first round is a simple question, actually. What's your favorite food? Blah, blah, blah stuff. So it's all pretty funny up until there. Mm-hmm. The contestants return for the swimsuit round, clad in light blue <laughs> bedazzled tool wow. G-strings. They climb onto the bar and dance while the cocktail waitresses douse them with water guns. The shouts of, <laughs> show us your dicks. Work on a few of the men who confidently whip out their competitive wieners for all to see. Chicken quickly reminds them that this isn't, isn't actually legal to show their naked parts. Maybe it's because they're on top of the bar and already seem larger than life, but their penises, the ones I sneak a peek at, at least look pretty well normal. Mm-hmm. These men seem to be having a genuine ball, and their confidence is something to be admired. Oh, yeah. As the contestants leave the bar counter, the audience strains to get a better look and watch each what each man is working with. Really? In mostly see-through tool and... Now heavy and sagging with water, it isn't very um, hard to see they're below the belt business. One girl grabs her friend and shrieks, I don't think Peter Parker has a penis at all. <laughs> I like the chicken bitches. So, chicken bitches, that's the drag queen name, ain't yeah. it? Yeah. Chicken bitches now in a neon yellow bow wig and floor sh- shaftan announces the final round of talent. Each contestant sings or dances as the crowd cheers so heartily. They were dancing? But they were dancing. But it's Raj Kumar who got the loudest applause for his traditional Bollywood number. <laughs> he you did put, a Bollywood number. Yeah, he put the wood in Bollywood, one judge <laughs> says. Okay. So, um, it was a pretty good enough event till now, one woman yells. What the fuck was that? Another shouts. Checking her shoes like she stepped in something foul. A guy shit himself, the doorman tells me, half grinning. It happened last year, too. This guy's fetish is to shit in public. Wow. Never changed, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. As the air clears, I go back inside now, most lately bar. Raji, to no one's surprises, crown champion. Oh, Beaming. Raj won? Raj did the won. Bollywood number? Yes. Okay. Beaming with a scepter in his hand and a golden crown on top of his head, he accepts his prize. $200, a date with two blinds, and a trip to the pump strip club. Wow. Raj tells me that he's new to the United States and spent most of his time in India. Indiana. He's, oh, Indiana. I thought, was, Jesus, I just crushed my eyes and getting bad. He's writing a screenplay called From India to Indiana. <laughs> Found the pageant on Facebook and it to have fun, meet people, and get out of his comfort zone. Well, Tom- <laughs> self-proclaimed six or seven inches, sure, Raj. Sure. He says he's never felt particularly ashamed or proud of his package. In India, love is placed high above sex, so size doesn't matter, he says. The physical is not what completes you. We're born with what we have, and then we die. Mm-hmm. So it's a con- it's a contest. It's a uh, pageant for pageant, di- yeah. guys with small dicks. But they do they just say that they have small dicks, but they're prob- probably average. Yeah. But they just want to display yeah. to everyone that they have a small dick. Yes, I guess so. Okay. But here's the deal. I saw I put a post on Facebook this morning about somebody put this video on about this woman had this big booty ass, mm-hmm. and then she gets on the video starts she's flipped her ass implanted back around and you hear her say it ain't supposed to do that. Okay. So I put on there, I said, you know what? God created us all, at least in my opinion. He did. What we look like, what we're supposed to do, and what he gives us, we should learn to love and work with. Mm-hmm. If you got a small dick, make up with it or the things. Because, you know, sex ain't everything for some people. You can be a good bottom. That's right. Yeah, even if you have a small but, dick. That's right. But a lot of bottoms usually have big dicks. So, I mean, that kind yes. of throws that off. So. But anyway... Work with what you got. I mean, it, you know, in this male masculine hyper society, it's one of those things like with um, to be digmatized by guys with big dicks, which are pretty to look at. But, you know, like our friend Dave, he likes looking at little dicks. So yeah. Mm-hmm. He has a thing for little dicks. So, you know, go for it. 
be who you are. Enjoy yourself because you know what? No matter how much you pump and do other stuff, it ain't going to change that much. But how about the uh, fe um, female to male ones or the male to female ones who really feel like they're, they're uh, you know, the, the trans, the, uh, the transgendered, the transgendered. So don't, you, how about them? I mean, it is also, some of them, you know, they feel that uh, they're a man in a woman's body, they're a woman in a man's body, that kind of well, thing. They get a penis. They had a video on Facebook the other week, and I started watching it, and I was like, oh, I can't do this, because mm -hmm. they were cutting the penis. It was a man. Oh, was, really? It was male to female, and I couldn't sit there and watch it. Male so they were female. skinning the penis, and I was like, I'm done. Oh. It was filleted. Oh, God. It's like something you'd see on Game of Thrones. Oh, it's like filleted, and I was done with it. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, I, just, I can't. I can't do it, no. But, yeah, I mean, if they, they have the choice to do it, and if they feel that way, then more power to them. Okay, so let's uh, move on to uh, audience comments. We have a voicemail. Yes. Here we go. Well, hello, Nard and Ray. Hey. Hi. I don't know if ever, anybody ever calls you on this line? But yes, people James call. Rarely. Hi, Hi, James. I just want to call in because I have an important question I want to ask you. Do you ever listen to anybody else's podcast? Why, you, yes, we do. What podcast do you like? For example, I listen to a great podcast from Melbourne, Australia. Which is called Joy ninety four point six. I heard about them. Um, it's oh. called The Woods. Um, they just had their bear event, and it was um, they brought in where the bears are to come in, which is a great group. Um, the host is Mark and Luke, and they're the most wonderful guys I've ever talked to. And I actually get up early to listen in our time, which is fifteen hours different in time. Sometimes it's still time. Sometimes it's so late. They're changing there's a little bit around, but it's a great podcast. And if you ever want to look it up, it's called joy.org.au backslash the woods. Um, it's a great uh, mm -hmm. podcast, other forum, just like I enjoy watching you guys. I enjoy listening to you talk. So, like I said again, I would like to know what your guys' podcasts are to listen to, or are they you enjoy to hear about, or, mm -hmm. or uh, is there any other ones that are great? I have a few. To, to get more information out there or, or to enlighten us. Um, they don't necessarily have to be bear oriented. I listen to a lot of the ones that are not bear oriented. That isn't just some sci fi ones. Um, and even Luke is starting a gamer one. I'm not a gamer, but I do understand that. So it's all about the question. Um, yeah. Thank you again. And again, this is James from Iowa. Thank you. Well, thank you, James. Thank you, James. About, what, 10 episodes ago? Maybe a little bit more than that? Yeah. We did a podcast that was about what other podcasts you listen to because who sent that in? Um, 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 Robert? Here. Can't remember. It's been a long time. Wasn't it? Um, he's here in Texas. We see him at TBRU all the time. Oh. Ooh, I can't remember. But anyway, yeah, we... we okay, totally honest, honestly... Uh, I myself am, have been very busy lately, and I, I have a very limited amount of uh, uh, you know, time now to watch or even to listen to podcasts. And I only usually get to listen to some podcasts when I drive to New Orleans. And uh, you, have, have you have time lately? No, I, I used to be a big fan of Slice of Sci-Fi. Mm -hmm. I used to listen to it religiously. Oh, yeah, me too before. But uh, I just got too big. I used to be able to listen to it at work while I, work, while I was actually doing work. Mm -hmm. But they told us we couldn't do that anymore. No music, no podcast, no nothing. We what? To, we're there to work. We're not there to listen to stuff. Uh -huh. Except for our bosses who make bad decisions. Um, <laughs> so, no, I don't really listen to anything lately. Um, I used to listen to that. And there was one that was a, a podcast. They would, re they would read short stories in the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, Sci-fi stuff that was pretty good. And I can't remember what the name of it is. Um there's one called the Underbears podcast. I've never really watched it, but I hear it's okay. <laughs> um, if you're into that kind of half naked bear thing, um, <laughs> now nah, we're just kidding. Um, actually, our friend Dave, who co-hosts here on time, does a podcast called Underbear. So, yep, mm -hmm. um, you can check that one out. Uh, really, I mean, really, I'm luckily for Dave. He gets to, Dave should answer this question because. He's the one that listens to all the tons of podcasts because he's flying all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he has time to sit there and listen to podcasts after podcasts. But um, I used to do that many years ago. When I started listening to podcasts in 2004 and 2005 when it was really big. When 
podcast was a big word back then. And yeah, you would listen about eight episodes, eight, eight, eight kinds of podcasts. So it was a long time ago. But right now, uh, I've been down to the ones I really listen to every day because there's a daily show. One is uh, Daily Tech News Show. Daily Tech News Show. It used to be Tech News Today with uh, uh, with Tom Merritt on uh, Lee Laporte's uh, Twit Network. But since he left, since Tom Merritt, I like Tom Merritt. I like his style. I met him myself. I met him at the Comic Con. I had a picture with uh, Tom Merritt. And so he moved out of, uh, uh, he left uh, Twit ne- the Twit Network and he did his own uh, podcast. It's called the uh, Daily Tech News, News Show. And I, oh, I love it. I, it's the same format that I like before. He has awesome guests and everything. So it's all tech. It's, it's my geek side that I do. I, I always watch that. And I don't watch. I listen. I don't listen. And it's really a great show because, you know, I I get... Uh, I, that's actually how I got the stories for for uh, the drone story. Because it is interesting. It's very... They have... Um, they're very updated with their stories and everything. And if I pick up something really nice to share... Uh, to you guys here watching or listening to the podcast, uh, uh, I, I like to share those. Yeah, that's where I sometimes get my news. And one big one, Bear Podcast would not be uh, would not be around. There would be no Bear Podcast if it weren't for the show called Distorted View. Distorted View. It's a, it's an evil show. <laughs> it's more like not evil show, but it's very it's it's like South Park. Mm-hmm. They at- he attacks. It's it's hosted by Tim Henson. He attacks everything, everyone, no limits. It could be gays. It could be uh, you know African Americans, whites. He attacks everyone, Republicans, uh, Democrats, every kind of religion. There's no there's no limit. There's no exception. That there's no um, there are no boundaries. Pretty much. So it's re- it's really watching or listening to the show. Uh, distorted view because um, you know you set aside your morals for a while and then really <laughs> listen to the show. It's a daily show and he's doing it alone. He's making money out of it too, so it's pretty good. Nice. Mm-hmm. We don't make money. We don't make money out of this. Only just you know you guys. We we'll do it for fun. It's awful fun. Um, but if you want to leave us a donation, <laughs> I should really put put uh, a link for a, you for should a, put a PayPal account for a PayPal man. account for a donation because it's nice to be able to buy some new equipment and stuff. Yeah. Or even just buy some coffee. Buy Ray some coffee. Or, that's right. You know, just a tip. Just a tip. Just a tip. Because <laughs> it's so small, that's all you might feel is just a tip. <laughs> Did you just win the, <laughs> the Brooklyn Smallest uh, Penis I might Pageant? Have inter- I might have to go enter next year. <laughs> all right. So thank you again, James, for the voicemail. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much what we listen to. And if you want something sci-fi, yes, I would. Oh, I remember. Now it's Tommy. Tommy. That's right. Tommy. Tommy, Tommy from Dallas. Tommy from uh, talking I knew. About I knew. I was like, "Why can't I remember?" See, it's old age. Yeah, kicking. He was in. talking about well, listening to Coverville. Yeah, because Coverville is, you know, it's lots of covers, I guess. Yeah, and uh, and very good covers of, of other bands, which is pretty cool. And there's a lot that he uh, he was talking about too. So I can't I can't remember. Let's go back and yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank thanks again, James. All right, let's go to the email. There's an email that we got from DJ. Hi, DJ. And DJ's from San Antonio. From San Antonio. Wow. How weird is that? Okay, so, hey guys, caught one of your old podcasts, Surfing the Web, and thought I would drop you guys a line. I want to say that as a person with hypospadias, uh, I I appreciate the attention and discussion that you gave the condition and uh, anything that helps educate the average person about hypospadias helps. As you can guess, hypospadias is something that a lot of folks hide, which is true. And the shame and isolation that a lot of people with it feel as much worse than the uh, physical side of living with it. If you decide to do more on the topic, please feel feel free to call me of any assistance. Oh, maybe we can have DJ in the show. That'd be be nice. So you remember our topic before hypospadias, right? Yes. That was, was it last year? Let me see. I'm looking at, oh, there it is. Uh, episode 397. 397. Yes, and uh, who did we call? So that was two years ago. Yeah, it was... Uh, what yeah, I was, was still it? in the apartment then when we did that. If I it's 2011. Oh, my God. It's three <gasps> oh, my God. It's three years ago. December December 15, 2011, it was posted. So, yeah, we talked so, about hypospadias. 
and what is this? Hypospadias emoticons, man's experiences. There's a link to hypospadias. So this is why you understand about hypos hypospadias. It's actually you have your dick. Okay, let's let's be clinical. Your, your penis, penis. <laughs> your penis has um, the 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 pee hole is not located where it's used to be. Where it used to be. It, it should. Where it's be. supposed to be. Where it's supposed to be. Not at the tip. It could be anywhere. And as a child. People would have, uh, the parents would have their child have a uh, surgery. I don't know how though. Maybe try to move it to the front or something I don't like know, that. I better take veins or something, stretch it out. Stretch it out and make it stuff. go to the front at least or something like that. So I guess the sensation and everything is still the same. But then if you're, you know, if you're peeing, it comes from the side or uh, it could be anywhere. Like I said, it could be anywhere in part of the, of the penis. So it's not in the, pee, in the regular pee yeah. hole that you have. So Usually uh, the whole... You're looking at the shaft. It usually falls somewhere in the shaft of the penis instead of the head of the penis. Instead of the head of the penis, yeah, it's at the shaft at the yeah. bottom. Yeah, so that is sad. So uh, at least I know at least two people. Now you're the third person, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> He's the third person. There's one. I I know I, I know he posted something like that on Life Journal before that he had hypospadias, and one we interviewed. Did we interview, we interviewed someone, right? Yeah, on that episode. Yeah, we we talked to someone. Uh, can't remember who it was, but yeah, we did. We it was did three years ago. We're both so old anymore. Yeah, so uh, that was even before the episode we had Doctor Woodja. It was the old apartment. Yeah, we were in your old apartment. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, hypospadias. It is a condition, and yeah, it's it, yeah. We we talked about it in the show before, and uh, I don't know. How do you even put a condom on that one? Just like you would anything else. Because the reservoir of the condom would is pointing at the front. You might have some difficulties with whether it captures all the semen and stuff, depending on where things are, but I don't think it works any different. Okay. But anyway, yeah. So thank you again, DJ, for the email. Use female condoms. They work better. It's no problem. Female condoms? Female condoms. Oh, we did that episode 500? No, episode 300. We talked about female condoms. Yes, if you have hypospadias, it's better for you to use a, a female condom, right? So, I would say so. I would say, yeah, okay. So, so yeah, thank you, DJ, again. All right. So, okay, that's the show. God, we took a long time. It's uh, almost 50 minutes. Yeah. So, okay, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. If you want to contact us, send your emails to show at bearpodcast.com. Or if you want to call us and leave us a voicemail, ta-da! You can call us at 206-222-2327. That's 206-222-BEAR. Call us, leave us a voice message. And like this young, wonderful gentleman, we will play it on the show. Yes, that's right. Thank you for the voicemail and the emails too. And uh, you can uh, follow us on, uh, oh wait, you can subscribe. Subscribe by iTunes, also on uh, YouTube and Vimeo. You can also listen to the show on Stitcher Radio, on uh, Bear Radio Network, also on the Roku Player. You can watch the videos and the audio and listen to the audio there and follow us on Facebook and Twitter and uh, you can uh, catch the whole show and uh, all the information and all the links that we talked about today on bearpodcast.com so Ray one more thing where are you going this weekend I'm going to South Carolina I'm going to the other uh, worst gay Republican state there is. <laughs> okay so Ray's gonna be out I'll be all alone my hubby's going to Brazil Ray's going to to uh, North Carolina. Brazil, trust me. Oh my God! I'll be all alone. This Team week. USA, 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 USA. I think they're done. No, no, no. no, no. They're, 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 tired they're still, the other they're still day. on. Okay. They're tired the other day. But anyway, yeah. So my partner's going to Brazil for um, for the World Cup. So, Mike, be careful there, please. Okay, Sorry. be careful. Take your penicillin shots now. <laughs> okay. So thank you everyone for watching or listening, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of Bear Podcast. Many wolves and many hugs. Wolf, what a bear. Podcast your ass. Wolf, what a bear. Wolf, what a bear. Podcast your ass. Wolf, what a bear. Wolf, what a bear. Podcast your ass. Wolf, what a bear. Twenty-five years for Batman. Oh my God, I feel so old.